Hello, and welcome back to Last Stream, World Unknown. I thought we would start things off today with something we haven't done in a while, which is going looking for a buried treasure that we have a treasure map for. And apparently there's a buried treasure near Svarta. I think possibly we even got the treasure map near Svarta. And so we will start things off today. It looks like it's going to be right over here. Let me change the zoom level. We ought to be able to see it when we zoom in. Yeah, it looks like it's just in the top corner of the forest over here. So let's see what we find. Three perfect elixirs. Great. Another buried treasure. Another treasure map used up and crossed off the list. I just wanted to get that out of the way because we'd gotten that, I don't know, an episode or two ago and I'd kind of forgotten about it. There's a lot of monsters walking around on the world and we haven't fought boss monsters in a while. This one is right near Theopolis and the Mercenaries Guild. And so I feel like it is likely uh, that it's going to be one of the easier monsters. And so I don't know who it is. Like, hey, on. Let's go ahead and give him a try right at the start. It looks like some kind of wild cat werewolf kind of monster. And so I can't imagine what, I don't know, extra crazy attacks it might have. So I feel like I ought to be in good shape. Uh, so I'm just going to do standard boss tactics. And if anything unusual happens, I'll let you guys know. All right, perhaps unsurprisingly, this guy can inflict bleeding states in my party. And so that seems to be the biggest threat that I have going on right now. Uh, Black Mage and the Thief are both in kind of sorry shape, uh, so let's go ahead and do a fast cure on the Black Mage in any case. Uh, but I am dealing damage to this guy. After three or four rounds, I've gotten, I don't know, probably an eighth of his hit points down. Okay, he has not done that attack before that attacks everybody and gives everybody bleeding, and so that's actually the first attack that I'm really threatened by. The Thief is probably going to die after this round due to bleeding to death. Yeah. All right, but that gives me the opportunity to bring him back to life, uh, which is still a good thing. And the monk still has plenty of hit points, and so I'm not worried about anything happening to him. So we'll go ahead and do... Uh, White Mage should stay alive, too. So we'll do Life 3 on the Thief. And... Let's see. Black Mage might end up dying this round, and so I'm trying to think if there's anything else that he needs to do to keep everybody in good shape. I think actually what he should do is do Godlike on the Monk, so the Monk can be doing as much damage as possible. Yeah, that'll increase both his attack and his defense. And so that's good. So, yeah, I think at this point I figured out what the main threat is with this guy, but I still think I know how to counteract it. I've lost count. I think I've had to resurrect dead characters 14 times already. Uh, but with four characters, I've been able to just kind of rotate who's dead at any time uh, and still be making progress against this guy. And he's almost dead at this point. Uh, the worst thing that happened... Okay, this is a pretty bad one where I have three dead guys <laughs> and a live white mage. Um, fortunately, he has Divine Intervention. Restore all dead allies with 50% hit points. Always the first action. I did have one time where the monk got confused, and so my own monk started killing my entire party. Uh, and so that was pretty bad. And honestly, we're not in great shape right now either. Um, but nevertheless, <laughs> he's almost dead, and so I think I'll be able to finish him off here. Uh, basically, this guy needs to use a resurrection elixir to bring the white mage back, and then probably two of my three guys are going to die this round. But the thief and the white mage will still be alive, and then the white mage can do another divine intervention, and it's kind of a back and forth, back and forth dance. But so long as the mages have enough magic points, uh, I don't see anything that's going to stop this from working, really. And he's really getting close to being almost dead. Oh, I can't do divine intervention right now. Okay, that one's interesting. So we'll do life three on the monk instead. And okay, now I'm in serious trouble. Uh, now I have to make a choice. The thief is about to die. And... Ugh. Yeah, we could easily lose the battle here. I'm curious. He's down to a sliver of hit points. I don't think I could kill him in one round, though. And if I don't kill him in one round, we lose. So I think at this point... I hate to use Essence of the Phoenix, but I think I need to use it. I've been trying to avoid it the entire battle, and have made it this far without having... Oh, no! <laughs> he hit first! <laughs> I had gotten so complacent. Um, well, Poop. I guess I'll try a different guy, because... That was a reasonably challenging battle, um, and I did have a number of close calls, and so maybe I'm just not ready... Uh, to fight that guy yet. There's another boss monster who is like right down here, I think. 
Yeah, some kind of flying creature. So let's try this guy instead. Who are you? King Goldemar. Let's see what this guy is like. He doesn't look very big. You're a king, huh? Uh, let's go ahead and, yeah, start off with an armed robbery. We'll start off with bloodlust. We'll start off with inflation. And we'll start off with crumble. This is always how I like to start boss battles. And we'll see what this guy's main threat is. The last guy definitely killed me with bleeds, and occasionally he does an attack where he'll either attack the entire party, uh, or he would attack and do five random attacks. Uh, and both of those were very good at getting everyone bleeding and taking off lots of hit points. Uh, and so that was kind of the main threat of the last battle. And so this battle, uh, we'll just get a sense of what threats this this guy, King Goldemar, is going to bring. Uh, one of the obvious threats is just that he has tons of hit points and a lot of defense, and so it'll take a very long time for me to wear him down. He did inflict the bleeding state, so that's obviously a threat as well. Okay, I think I'm already through eight deaths in this battle. This guy also has the opportunity to inflict bleeding states on the entire party. And so I'm really struggling through this. I can't remember. I might have a ring that enables me to be immune to bleeding. And I might want to put that on the White Mage if I'm going to be doing uh, more boss battles. Because that is definitely my Achilles heel at this point. Um, I guess let's hope that heal 4 is going to get a chance to go off. I do have most of this guy's hit points down. He's like 75% down or something, and it actually hasn't been that long of a battle. Um, oh, oh, there goes my white mage, and so now everybody's about to die. Yeah, I think I'm about to game over on this screen, too. All right, but I think I have learned something valuable, uh, which is basically what I need to do differently. <laughs> uh, you're out of magic points, and so you can use a resurrection elixir on the white mage. I am still going to try to win this battle, if possible. We'll go ahead and use a knuckle breaker. And you can go ahead. Yeah, let's just throw everything we've got at him right now. We'll do an implosion for the moment. Just see if we can somehow manage to finish this guy off in case we get lucky. But yeah, I think basically immunity to bleeding. I need to check my rings, see if there's a way to get that. Uh, that would be the key. I think I would probably put it on the white mage. Um, because if the white mage stays alive, then the white mage at least always has the possibility of uh, doing a divine intervention. To bring multiple people back uh, and bring people back is the best possible outcome because when they come back they're not bleeding anymore which means they'll be able to keep their hit points up um, and so having characters periodically die is actually a good thing uh, overall during these boss battles uh, I find and so yeah I think it's basically I need to keep the white mage alive and prevent the white mage from getting the bleeding status effect so that's gonna be my strategy moving forward that said, it is possible that I'm still going to be able to win this battle uh, right here, right now. And we're close to the end of it, and so I'll go ahead and keep you guys here just to see the type of fighting and strategy I've been doing. I think that might be like the 12th character who's died uh, at this point during the battle. Right, and you're out of whatever. Uh, so in that case, I should, since you're not going to hit very hard, I should have you use a Resurrection Elixir and then have you use Heal 4 so that you can heal the entire party that way. And you can continue doing implosions so that we do a little bit of damage. But I think if I live through this round of battle, the next round of battle, I will be able to finish this guy off. Uh, he occasionally does that magic spell, which hits everybody. But so long as it doesn't inflict a bleed, uh, I'm in good shape. Yeah, everybody just got a heal. And so I think I'm going to be able to finish him off uh, this round. Uh, so you can attack. You uh, might as well use Knuckle Breaker, I think. Um, you can go ahead and just keep healing the party, and you can do another Annihilation, and this should finish him off, I think. And then I think I'll probably go back to town and heal up, and then retry strategies with new rings uh, back on the previous boss monster that I tried to take on, because I feel like I'm, I'm kind of dialed into boss battling mood, uh, and possibly will be able to dial into the boss battling gear as well. And so, while I have that all dialed in, uh, it seems like it would be a good time to uh, try to take advantage of it. Who needs a cure? Let's just make sure we keep the monk alive, because if we keep the monk alive, we'll definitely be able to finish off this battle. But it might be about to end right here. Go, monk, go! Hit him, hit him, hit him! Yeah! Alright, and everybody's alive, so everybody gets the experience, which is also nice. 
Okay. Cobalt Fang. Neat. All right. I'm going to go heal back up, and then we'll go to the Mercenary Guild and see what our reward is. You'll note that I'm going to get my reward before changing any of my equipment, because it's possible that I'll get a ring that makes me immune to bleeding and something else. Uh, so might as well find out what all of my equipment is first. Well done, Defending King Goldemar, and good luck on your next target. Here's your reward for defeating the target. Ignatius Shoes and Ignatius Boots. All right, great. Many thanks for your tireless work. Yep. They'd all congratulate you on saving them, and saving their precious children from the monster. Peculiar creature of legend. Okay, so let's take a look at those boots and shoes. Uh, what are you currently wearing? You have mercenary shoes, which increase preemption. Tell me about Ignatius shoes. Half magic cost, Ignatius boots, half magic cost. Garnet is like, I guess that's like Ignatius tier of different things, and it does... It does increase agility and uh, defense. Uh, I've been leveraging the preemption of the mercenary shoes that he is wearing. So I don't know that I want to necessarily change that. You have mercenaries boots that increase defense. This might be an upgrade. Uh, let's see what the defense numbers are here. They would have magic MP cost, which you don't really need. They increase agility and preemption, but decrease the defense. I think I'd prefer to have the defense, honestly. Uh, sapphire shoes are not particularly interesting, and so in this case, Ignatius shoes is a straight upgrade. Uh, there's nothing to be lost by upgrading to those, and you have Virgil shoes, which give you some immunities, and so those are good. Okay, so I'm not going to change that, and then what I do want to check out is... This prevents all status effects except not zombification, jinx, or disease. Do I have one that prevents against bleeding. I don't remember. Okay, I don't have one that protects against bleeding. However, you're currently wearing the Genji ring, which includes, which doesn't include those three. And I have a couple of ancient rings, which prevent against all status effects, including those three. And so it's definitely something that I should upgrade there. And so I'm going to check out all of my rings to see if there's other things that I ought to be changing. I was also looking at my skills. The Thief doesn't have First Strike, which isn't something that I would plan to use. However, it does unlock Bloodlust, which is the same thing I think that my Monk has. Uh, and so that's a good skill to use at the beginning of boss battles, and so I'm going to definitely learn that for the Thief. And now that I'm wearing the Ancient Ring on the White Mage, which prevents against all the status effects, I don't need a Dark Hat that combines Zombification and Instant Death Immunity. Instant Death Immunity is still kind of nice, um, but I could probably upgrade to Virgil's Hat. Let's see, that would be Magic Point Recovery. I don't really need that. Sapphire Hat would increase defense and magic defense. Oh, the Mercenary's Hat is also giving me a bonus to Intelligence which is probably important because that probably affects how much she heals. And so maybe I actually need to keep on the mercenary hat. I did not realize that that was an extra uh, side effect of that thing. So this prevents against status effects. So I don't need to wear this robe. So if I upgrade this to Virgil's robe, yes, that would be an upgrade or the mercenary's robe. Yeah, that's again, things that I don't need. And so Virgil's robe, I presume is the best thing. It is Amethyst, and it recovers magic points per turn. And seems to have the same status effects as a Sapphire Robe, so that's a straight upgrade. I was looking to see if there were any other items I could synthesize that prevent bleeding. I don't see any, but I don't remember seeing the Thaumaturgical Helm, which is a Sapphire Helm that increases magic defense. That might be worth making. Is anyone wearing a Sapphire Helm? I guess you would be the only person and you're wearing Virgil's Helm. And how does it compare to a Sapphire Helm? It seems like it's equivalent except for it boosts hit point recovery. And so what was the Thaumatological Helm doing? It was increasing magic defense. I think I prefer having the hit point recovery on the Thief. So I still don't think it's something that I want, but that was something that I hadn't looked at. But at this point, I've kind of reevaluated all of my... I don't know, armor and weaponry and all that kind of stuff. And it's good to do that every so often because it's easy for things to get lost in the mix. Uh, and I did manage to improve some things. And so I think I'm actually going to take another shot at this boss down here. So 
yeah, I'll see you guys towards the end of it. Wow! Second round of battle, and the monk is confused, and the monk just killed the white mage, and this guy had already killed the black mage, and I think I'm dead. I think basically if I don't have immunity to confusion on the monk, then that's just like an instant game over. Um, yep. <laughs> Alright, well at least I learned that early. Um, I suppose the correct thing to do is to guard and just let myself die right here at the end of battle so that I can get out of this. Okay, wow. That was a harsh lesson, but it was one that I'd forgotten about, and so it was good that I was able to learn it early. If the monk gets confused, your party game over. Okay, so on the monk, we're going to trade out the guardian ring for the ancient ring. The guardian ring gave him a nice bit of defensive stats, but the ancient ring will prevent the status effects, uh, and it seems like that is the trade-off that I need to deal with right now. Well, I game over it again. <laughs> I guess I'm just not ready. I must have gotten really lucky the first time around, because I end up with a lot more people bleeding and confused and all kinds of things against this guy, so I guess I'm just not strong enough to take him on yet. You live and you learn. I'm just in a boss fighting battle, though, and so I've come down to the continent of the Elven continent. What is it? Valundra? And I found a giant spider named Arachne, so let's see what this boss battle is like. Hey, I just stole a Sapphire Axe from the spider. The spider has a defensive thing where it gave itself tons of agility, and so I've been using potions and magic spells that increase the accuracy of my characters so they're actually able to hit the spider. But other than the Black Mage just becoming paralyzed, so far this has actually been a very straightforward battle. He's just hardly dealing any damage to me and not giving me hardly any status effects. And so I don't expect that this is going to be a problem at all. We'll go ahead and use a remedy on the Black Mage so he can start dealing out some damage. Still another perfect elixir, that's great. Um, but yeah, this battle seems to be much, 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 much easier than either of the other two. Uh, and so I expect I can just kind of do a very straightforward strategy through this fight. Yeah, so this boss has been really easy. He basically deals almost no damage to my party and doesn't inflict any status effects other than occasionally paralysis. And so all I have to do is outlast him. Um, I've hardly even had to heal, and so I've mostly just been blessing the monk and the thief with extra accuracy and attack power. And as a result, they have worn down his hit points pretty quickly. Um, I guess I'll throw in a fast heal here just for good effect. Um, and I'll actually have the Black Mage do some damage with Annihilation. But this boss has been so much more straightforward uh, than the other two bosses I've tried to fight this episode. And I'm sure I've done a ton of editing, so I probably don't actually have that much footage yet. So maybe we'll do some more boss battles after this, because I'm kind of enjoying them, uh, even if they don't turn into much that's, I don't know, particularly exciting to watch. And so, I don't know, that's kind of one of the things I like about this series. Uh, is that I get to enjoy playing the game sometimes, even if it doesn't turn into interesting footage. Um, there we go. Hooray! Another one down. Yeah, and so it's in some sense more fun for me than some other series is, is, is that I've recorded. Uh, and I don't know, maybe that will end up kind of translating through uh, and you guys will enjoy me enjoying the game or something like that. Or maybe it's just wishful thinking. In any case, I'm going to head back to the Mercenaries Guild and see what our reward was for killing that boss. What you got for me, Constantine? Well done, defeating Arachne. Here's your reward. Ignatius' gloves and gauntlets. Alright, let's check those out. The gloves double experience gained, which could be useful. Uh, greatly increased intelligence, halves magic point cost. I don't really need the halves magic point cost. My white mage is not in any danger of running out of magic points. Uh, and so let's put on Ignatius' gloves and try to increase the level of my white mage. And what was the other thing? Gauntlets, I suppose. 
And so Virgil's Gauntlets increase attack. Ignatius Gauntlets also double experience gained. And so you're wearing Sky Blue Gauntlets at half MP cost. Once again, I don't necessarily need the halved MP cost. And so increasing the experience gains that we can level up faster uh, sounds like a nice trade off to me. So I'm actually going to wear both of those. So that is terrific. Khan would spring from his grave and shake your hand if he could. Congratulations on doing what even the mighty Khan could not. Our thanks. Hooray! Okay, let's go find some other bosses. This is fun. Okay, over on the Goblin Continent, down in the desert portion, I happen to spot somebody. Looks like a Cyclops Crab. Evil Eye is the name of this guy. He's probably going to hit me with some kind of instant death attack, I expect, and I actually took off a ring that would protect against that, so that might end up being a disadvantage. Uh, but let's try to get a sense of what this guy is going to be like. We'll start out with Bloodlust, Inflation, and rather than starting out with Crumble, I decided I like starting out with Godlike on the Monk, uh, and then Godlike on the Thief. And basically I'm having the Black Mage play more of a support role in these boss battles, rather than trying to have him do direct damage. Engulfing Gloom. Okay, I can live with that. It doesn't do any status effects. And a few hit points uh, against my party never really hurt anybody. Especially when our hit points are going to be inflated due to the inflation spell. And then once we have that going, I have actually also been using First Strike uh, with the Thief, which gives him uh, subsequent actions striking first, so he always gets hit first, which could be an advantage situationally. I don't know if it actually turns out that way. I also start with Knuckle Breaker because that reduces targeted attacks uh, for five turns, and so I don't know that this guy is going to be doing melee attacks against me, but just in case he does, uh, that puts us in good shape. And now I'm going to do Godlike on the Thief. All right, and so he's got first strike at this point. And Knuckle Breaker, 25,000 hit points right off the bat is pretty good. Enchant, no resist sleep. It put everybody to sleep. Okay, that's a problem. And then he reduces everybody's intelligence. Who's going to wake up first? White Mage, great. That's actually the best person to wake up first because she can cast Panacea to get rid of all status effects on the party. And so that'll wake everybody up. Paralysis, not a problem. And Panacea is actually going to get rid of the paralysis now, because that woke everybody up. Everybody is low on hit points all of a sudden. <laughs> not quite sure how that happened. Uh, but let's start dealing out some damage. Uh, getting a heal four out here. And... Hmm... I guess let's just get a sense of what Annihilation does against this guy as well. Okay, 27,000 hit points there. Annihilation. It's only 2,000, so basically the Black Mage should focus on support rather than direct damage. And that was like uh, 25,000. So both of my melee people can do 25,000 damage, and so I should definitely focus on the melee combat against this particular enemy. Um, yeah, okay, so I think I know what I should be doing now, and so now it's just a matter of doing it. And so as an example of the Black Mage playing support, I'm going to have him use a Marlin, which heals 1,500 hit points for the entire party, because my White Mage's uh, general heal spells are on cooldown right now, and so that's a way for everybody to get some hit points back. I have the White Mage focused on making sure the Monk stays alive, because he's doing a lot of good stuff. Pitch Black Trident. I've not seen that before, but so long as it only hits one bad guy, I'm pretty happy about that. Ooh, Pitch Black Trident apparently was an instant death attack because the monk just died. That is unfortunate. Um, fortunately, we have lots of opportunities to bring him back because I don't have a whole lot of other healing going on, and so we'll do that. And I guess in the meantime, then... Yeah, the Black Mage can support the Thief by casting Godlike on him is probably the best thing to do. So yeah, I was right that instant death attacks were going to be a possibility. And it just occurred to me, I can cast Immortal to prevent instant death for the entire party. So I should totally do that. I forgot that the White Mage had that spell. And so that should leave me in good shape moving forward. Because other than the instant death attacks, I don't expect just hit points. He's going to be able to wear me down. Because his attacks are relatively weak. Great. Now everybody's Immortal. 
The evil eye put an interesting status effect on me. 10,000 damage in three turns, turns left to one. So I think after one more round of combat, I, I would take 10,000 damage from this uh, magic spell he cast on me. The good news is uh, it doesn't matter because he's going to die before that happens. I'll do a fast seal just to make sure I'm up at maximum hit points regardless. Um, but yeah, I think one more attack is going to take him down. But that was at least something interesting and out of the ordinary. But once I had the Immortal up, basically, yeah, nobody ever died. I was able to heal everybody up. Um, yeah, another straightforward boss battle that has been won. And as a result, oh, we're getting some level ups coming too. A giant eye. All right, great. I intentionally got into a random boss, or random boss, <laughs> random normal encounter. Uh, battle just out on the playing field out here just so that I can try to level up the rest of my characters since I'm about to go to an end to sleep and the black mage might take a little bit of extra time I guess due to the fact that the white mage and the monk are now wearing the experience boosting Ignatius boots or whatever it is um, but let me try to get at least three of my four party members leveled up and so one more random encounter should probably do it here we go Will you guys be enough? Alright, Black Mage, kill everybody with Fire 2. Or Fire 2. Fire 8. <laughs> Yay! Yes, and both of those guys leveled up as well. Okay, cool. Hello, Constantine. Tell me what I've won this time around. Well done defeating the Eagle Eye. Good luck on your next target. Here's your reward for defeating the target. Ignatius' Dagger and Ignatius' Axe. That sounds interesting to me. How does an H.S. Stagner compare to Virgil's sword? Absorb 7% hit points of the damage dealt. Interesting. So it doesn't hit as hard. It would be more accurate, and my thief has had a little bit of problems with accuracy. And I'm actually going to have to devote a bit of his level up to increasing his accuracy score. Um, absorb 7% hit points of the damage dealt. Does that mean absorbs so like it's vampirism, and when I deal damage, I get some back? Or does it mean that when people hit me, they hit me for only 93% of what they hit me with? I'm not sure. We'll go ahead and equip that in order to find out. And what was the other thing? Uh, it was Ignatius' dagger. Was it Ignatius' axe, I think? And I guess the thief is not capable of wielding it, because I don't see it here. And I know nobody else would be able to wield it, and so I guess it's not something else that's going to be useful to me. Um, but just because I'm curious, uh, I'm going to just go look it up in the item list just to see what the tooltip says. Garnet Axe that absorbs 7% of damage dealt. Okay, so the same kind of thing, only in Axe form. Okay, cool. And you've seen the crown jewel of the Goblin Nation, Hobgar, by slaying the Evil Eye. Thank you for your unending dedication to the protection of Firma. Yes, yes, indeed. All this laudatory praise is well deserved. I agree, Ignatius. I agree. I'm going to try to get into another random encounter just to try the dagger out once. And so I'm going to fight. Uh, let's just hit the kobold with it and try to observe what happens. Oh, wow, the dagger, it actually, okay, I might actually be able to read it just on status effects. Ignatius dagger absorbs 7% hit points. I guess it doesn't tell me kind of like more detail than that here, though. Okay, so we'll just have to observe what happens. So I'll have you fight him, I'll have you fight him. And then I'll have the mages discard, so I can see exactly what happens here. Alright, so show me. Yes, it does! It's like vampirism. So basically that allows the thief to heal. Alright, just by attacking guys. That's really interesting. Okay, that's fun. I like that. Um, I guess... <laughs> since you've got silenced, I'll discard and use melee damage to go ahead and finish out this fight. And at this point... I'll have to do the editing, but I think I probably have enough footage for today. Uh, we got to see three boss battles, we went on a little treasure hunt, um, and what's most important is that I'm having lots of fun and improving my party in terms of their own skills, uh, you know, just like their intrinsic experience and stats and all kinds of stuff like that, as well as the particular items, you know, weapons and armor that they are using. Uh, and I don't know, that's one of the things that's most fun about these games, is you just get to keep leveling up, um, and it's just a video game, but you feel like you're always making progress and feel good about yourself. So it works in that regard. Makes you happy. Makes me happy anyway. I hope it makes you guys happy too. Hope you guys are having a great day. I will see you again soon for more of Last Dream World Unknown. Bye-bye.